Now, so most of us, we, you know, we engineers, we use the building codes to design buildings or strengthen the buildings for the earthquakes and the hurricanes and so on, right? The building code, if you follow it, this is a truth for worldwide. Building most likely will not collapse for major hurricane event or earthquake event. So for the risk mitigation point of view, for saving a life's point of view, using the building codes is fine. But if you start looking for business continuation or reduce the amount of the downtime for especially, let's say, the uh, hospitals and schools and um, corporate headquarters and some facilities and police and the fire stations, building codes are not good enough. That's a fact. So what are we going to do? Well, <sighs> let's talk about options for the uh, managing the uh, seismic or hurricane risks. You have uh, three distinct options. First one is really easy one. Do nothing. Nothing at all. And which is actually done by many different entities in different countries. It's a fairly common actually. Do nothing. If something Second one is, this is a fairly common too recently, especially for the many multinational corporations. Transfer the risk to something else. Means buy the insurance. This is what we call risk transfer. So what are we going to do? Reduce the risk by structural hardening. Engineers to analyze the buildings and harden the structures. So what I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, this example from the United States to describe these this three options and what is a typical risk management we do in the U.S. Okay, so when we do a risk management, there are three different phases. And the first one, which is the most important one, actually, this is what we call risk audit. So yeah. this is what we do. Use the building types. Building, actually, A, B, C, D, E. So in this case, there are five different buildings, right? And each building has some certain structural components. For example, let's pick the uh, building B. This is a, built, this is a building built in 1968. It's a reinforced masonry. So first thing we do is we do structural analysis of this building. And structural engineer, we come up to numbers. We come up to uh, seismic uh, shear capacity or the uh, deflection of a building at all. But so what we do is we convert to the financial terminology. This is what we call Provo Maximal Loss, PML. The PML is the, um, um, it's commonly used for the insurance industry to really understand the uh, public, public amount of a loss expected. So this case is the 50% means, means if this 97 event happens, 50% of replacement cost is loss. So these two things are very important. To discuss the probable maximum loss, what is the replacement cost damage, and what is the uh, business interruptions. And that is the uh, two informations the private sector really need it. Now See, this is, the, this is not engineering. This is the risk management exercise. Management. Risk is management is you pick the what is the uh, worst one, then you fix those buildings. Now. So since we all have a limited funding, it's very important to pick the have a most financial impact or have a highest impact to the death ratio. 